Okay, in this session we're going to carry on with our journey and reflection on the ways in which we can estimate the aerobic capacity. So in a previous podcast we looked at the way in which we can determine this key parameter both in terms of endurance performance but also in terms of describing clinical population groups through the use of capillary blood sampling. But we also identified that there were a number of significant limitations in identifying what, what we termed the lactate turn point. Therefore, what we're going to address today is an alternate approach, a non-invasive invasive estimation of the aerobic capacity, the use of what is referred to as the ventilatory threshold. So we're going to use expired air and the collection of expired air in the form of oxygen and carbon dioxide to be able to estimate the aerobic capacity, in other words that transition that we've previously been considering where we move from predominantly aerobic to predominantly anaerobic metabolism. So to do this we first of all have to recognize that we're dealing with something slightly different to what we're seeing with the lactate data. With the lactate data, the blood lactate data, what we were really getting at was that rate of appearance and rate of disappearance and we're using that to as a surrogate indication or a direct indication of the maximal lactate steady state. Here, we're not collecting um, blood samples. We're not recording the blood lactate response. What we're interested in is what we find in, in expirate, the O2 CO2 content. So in order to do that, the first thing we need to think about is what controls ventilation? What controls ventilatory responses? And so we have to look at the underlying mechanisms there is a link to the lactate, and you can see why these two overlap and why um, one is, is, is technically viewed interchangeably with the other in a, in, in a lot of uh, publications. But we first of all need to think about the mechanisms of ventilatory control. Then we're going to think about the methods or the methodology for identifying the ventilatory threshold. So once we understand what it is we, we, we want to identify, we then need to think about how we're going to do this. So, this is beyond just using treadmill and cycle ergometry. This is getting down to a bit like we saw in previous podcasts. How do you actually identify the ventilatory threshold? Remember, in, in, in the previous podcast, we struggled to be able to identify the lactate turn point, particularly when we use a visual inspection of, of the blood lactate profile. The same exists here. There are a lot of ventilatory responses that we can look at, what we need to do is we need to address these in terms of the concepts of validity and reliability to find one or a few that are fit for purpose. And then the final thing is this, we're trying to, trying to identify the aerobic capacity, we're trying to use the ventilatory threshold as an alternate to using the lactate turn point. So actually is the ventilatory threshold a good alternate to using the blood lactate data? And crucially, does it tie into maximal lactate steady state using a gold standard approach for that collection? So in other words, we're going to come full circle and, and offer up some, some overview in terms of the, the applicability of this parameter.